Hello and welcome back to the Littlest Podcast. I am your host, James. And today, we are looking at the episode, The Secret Recipe. It begins at school in Miss Amster's class, where Miss Amster is introducing Young Me's presentation for the last day of Young Entrepreneurs Week. So Young Me gets up and Blythe helps Young Me with her presentation. And Young Me's presentation is about her own creation, which is a pet snack that she has made from fresh, all-natural ingredients and is enjoyed by any pet. She then takes out a small duffel bag and pulls out a rabbit hand puppet and says, even if your pet's a bunny. And everyone really likes this presentation. It's really well done for middle school. I guess it's it's stilted here. It's a bit stilted, but she is reading off a thing. And I mean, I guess that's kind of the person young me is. Like, she just, like, I sped through a lot of thoughts there, and, uh... My mouth said the last one, so let's back up. When I say that's kind of the person Young Me is, I was thinking that, like, when Young Me heard there was a Young Entrepreneur's Week, she wanted to give it a go, even though she might not be adept to being, um, even though she might not have been too much of an entrepreneur. She likes a challenge and things I could probably do it, and did it. It's kind of something like that. That's what I was thinking of. Anyway, so after her presentation is over, class is over, and then Miss Amster comes up to her after class and says that this could be a real thing, which Young Me and Blythe celebrate. So later, at the Littlest Pet Shop, Buttercream comes screaming in, saying that she's been poisoned, and she faints. Everyone is in shock, but then she just gets right up and says she wasn't poisoned. Blythe says that that's not funny, and Buttercream apologizes, saying that she can't stand Young Me's pet treats. The pets are interested, and Blythe explains that Young Me uh, made some treats for Young Entrepreneurs Week, And uh, she's kind of serious about it, which is sort of a surprise to Blythe, because, I mean, I guess Blythe knows her friend well. And maybe she also thought that Young Me's pet treats were created on, like, this effort to be creative. And I guess she's following through on it because she got some positive feedback. And... Whatever. It's it's stuff like that. Um, all these little touches. Anyway. Meanwhile, Buttercream keeps interrupting, saying that they are definitely not delicious. Blythe wants to go check on Young Me to see if she's still doing it to make it real. And Buttercream asks Blythe to keep her hiding place a secret from Young Me, which Blythe agrees to. So Blythe heads over to Sweet Delights to see Young Me. She asks about the pet treats, and Young Me says that she's just got done making a batch. Blythe asks, you don't want me to try them. (laughs) Young Me says, no, but she would like to test them on the pets. And Young Me continues saying that Buttercream tried some, but she didn't like it. Blythe covers for Buttercream, saying that bunnies are fussy, and she probably filled up on, like, carrots or whatever. And Young Me reiterates that she wants to see how the pets like him. Because maybe she'll get a better reaction. Because Blythe told her that, you know, bunnies are kind of fussy. But, you know what? It's good. That's what we knew. I don't even know why I said that. Uh, she also says that they will need a few minutes to cool... And Blythe says, good, I'll go warn them. I mean, I'll tell them to expect you. And 
really, Blythe kind of does this a lot whenever she says something that might reveal a bit too much. And no one seems to catch it. That's, uh... I mean, it's a suspension of disbelief thing at this point. But, like, I just want to point it out because I haven't. But it's just suspension of disbelief is all. Anyway, at the pet shop, before Blythe gets there, Vinny's finishing a thought. And that thought is, and that's when I realized that rainbows don't really rain. (laughs) Oh, God, it's that nice little touches that make this show worthwhile sometimes. Anyway, Blythe comes... <laughs> I'm sorry, that line just gets me every time. And that's why rainbows don't really... <laughs> oh, it's just... <laughs> it's just so good. But anyway, Blythe comes in and gives them a heads up to which Buttercream responds, So long, suckers! <laughs> Man... All of these good bits. <laughs> anyway, Penny asks, uh, aren't Young Me's treats supposed to be terrible? Blythe says that that might be one bunny's opinion, but even if you agree, just pretend you like it. And then Pepper says, I get it. You want us to lie. <laughs> Holy... <laughs> This episode is just so well written, and I will get into more of that later. But I love, I love the humor of this episode. It's so great, so great. Blythe says that it's not a lie. I just want to keep Young Me's spirits up. She's doing this for fun, and I don't want to get her discouraged about this. Zoe then compares it to an acting gig, and then Buttercream makes a comment, and Blythe asks her not to be there for the tasting, to which Buttercream says, you don't have to tell me thrice, and then Young Me enters and gives the pets the treats. The pets give questionable faces, but then smile to indicate they like it. Blythe says that they like it, and Young Me wants to feed them some more, But Blythe is like, no, I mean, like, you know, too much of a good thing. And uh, Blythe takes her out to celebrate and they go for smoothies on her. And after they're out of the day camp area, the pet spit them out and says that they were terrible. Buttercream tells them so with her quirk. And the pets continue talking about how bad they were. Sunil brings up the fact that this is just for Fionn and Young Me isn't planning on unleashing them to the pet population at large. And they did a good thing to keep Young Me in high spirits. And Minka comments on this saying, Our good deed for the day is done. And outside, Blythe and Young Me are having smoothies, and Young Me can't believe the reaction she got from the bets. Young Me says that she's ready to take it to the next level when Blythe asks what that is young me tells her the bear cave Blythe spits out her drink and asks if she means the show where entrepreneurs can show off their new products and young me says yep and I'm even taking buttercream to show how much a real pet likes them she's got such a good reaction from the class and the pets that she wants to do this for real so Young Me, as a character, also moves really fast. And, I mean, Blythe knows that. But I think she didn't expect this level of uh, speed up. Exactly. But, like, that's kind of who Young Me is from what we've seen of her. Like, she's such an interesting character. And this episode really shows it off. And seeing her be sort of at the center of it, while also not... It's just really good. And, you know, I have a lot to say. But, like, I really think the episode speaks for itself on this. Because it's just a good episode. 
And Blythe, in this moment, realizes that she's messed up. And when Young Muse walks off, Blythe nervously sips down the last of her smoothie. Like, what did I just do? Like, like I thought I was doing the right thing, but I'm not. And it's just so good. And we're, we're going to get into that a little more. But it's just such a good moment. That, like, Blythe helping her friend might not be helping her friend. It's just so interesting. And we uh, we get into that in the next scene. So, back in the pet shop, Buttercream is complimenting the rest of their pets as on their skills as an actor. And Zoe leans into it, and Blythe walks in depressed and buttercream asks why Blythe tells them what young me just told her and the buttercream faints at the mention of her being there to see how much a pet loves her treats Blythe says that this is a mess and it's all her fault and she doesn't know what to do then he says that they should try the f- treats again but this time be honest about their reactions And Blythe likes that idea and says that maybe seeing their honest reactions will maybe help tone young me down for a bit. And, you know, that actually also makes sense. Like, oh, oh, goodness. It's just, this episode's goodness is just bursting out the seams, like, like, I could not hold myself back from talking about that. Because, like, it, it is apparent in that scene. But it's verbally confirmed in this scene, which is one scene later. And not even a minute goes by. But, ah, uh, there's so much I want to say about how layered this episode is. But I think we need to go through the episode first. So, for right now, this is where we are. Blythe likes Vinny's idea and calls him a genius and goes to get young me. And Vinny tells Russell, did you hear that? I'm a genie! And then Russell says, genius. And then Vinny says, whatever. So Blythe comes back in and tells Young Me to test your products randomly at all times, and Young Me goes along with it, and they give the pets the treats again, but this time they spit them out. Young Me is shocked, and Blythe explains that the tests don't lie, but just try again just to be sure, and then Young Me realizes something. She forgot the cardamom, which is a thing. I, I'm not familiar with it. I'm sure cooking people are... I'm not familiar with it. I'm sure I've had it at some point. I looked it up. It's like a sort of common spice or something. Whatever. Anyway, and Blythe is confused. Young Me says that if she doesn't forget the cardamom at the bear cave tomorrow, she'll be fine. And Blythe is thrown off by her being at the bear cave tomorrow (laughs) and asks about this. Young Lee says that she just found out and uh, she also rebranded her uh, treats to be Buttercream Bunny's Pet Bites. Buttercream says, I did not sign off on that. And Young Me is really, really excited and she wanted a cute face for the product. And whose face is cuter than Buttercream's? Which is a fair point. And Young Me leaves saying she has to get ready for tomorrow and Blythe is now more dejected than ever and Russell asks Blythe what she's gonna do Blythe explains that she can't let young me embarrass herself on tv so she's going to have to tell the truth that the pets just don't like her treats and when asked how she knows she'll have to say because they told me. And the pets are listless. Because 
Blythe is thinking about sharing her secret. Blythe says that she didn't want people thinking she was weird. And Zoe says, your real friends wouldn't think that. And Blythe says, you're right. At least, I hope you're right. And then, and then it breaks into a song. And this song gives me kind of uh, like a Taylor Swift vibe, kind of. I can't really think of a better example. It just kind of feels Taylor Swifty at some points. So the song itself is about Blythe being concerned about telling Young Me about her secret. And it's a sweet and heartfelt song about friendship and what it means and who you are as a person and how like that should not define your friendship. And it's just beautiful and Honestly, it's one of my favorite songs on the entire soundtrack. And, like, favorite for all the right reasons. Not not like uh, Dance Food Fighting where, like, it's, it's fun and entertaining. But, like, that, that came from, like, the shock value. <laughs> this came from, like, the heart. And it is felt throughout the song. It's just was so good and okay I did put this in my notes and it is a fair point to make but I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now I'm not the best person to make this point but it's better than not making this point at all so like writing these notes and focusing it kind of sounds like it could be a coming out song if you didn't know the context of like well the exact context like if you knew the context it might still fit you could still use it again I'm not the best because like I I never had to as of this point. But like it's just it kind of feels like that at points. Like they don't they just refer to Blythe having a secret, not Blythe uh like not what that secret is. And like outside of the context it, it could sound like that. It's like... Like... I have this secret, and if I reveal it to you... Like, I don't want our friendship to change. Or at least change in a negative way. And it's just... Like, like saying that kind of sounds... Closety, okay? Um... That's that's just my opinion or understanding of it. Like I said, I'm not an expert. It just feels like it. But, like, it's just a good song. And I love all of the bits in it. Like, it's just reflecting on Blythe and Young Me's friendship. And the pets are watching, and they're getting into it, and it's just so like at the at the second chorus where Blythe gains the confidence to do it, like like an imaginary young me like pops out, and and it just like shows what could happen. Uh, like, like if this goes through, it's just so, such a good song. Oh God. I just, it's also a really good episode and, oh God, I just can't like, there's just too much good about this episode. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. So. 
After the song, Blythe goes to tell young me and hopes everything will be all right. Blythe goes to Sweet Delights to tell young me, and young me wants Blythe's help packaging her treats. And Blythe begins to tell her, and young me asks, "What's wrong? You sound weird." And and this this just sets her back cuz like this is exactly what she didn't want like like it's a confusing thing but it it makes sense for Blythe as a character too cuz like like okay we are going into how i see the canon or the head canon but it it also just makes sense in some aspect so Blythe, like, had to move from suburbia to downtown city, and she doesn't seem to keep track with her old friends. Like, she doesn't see her dad much. Her mom is gone, and she just... I think Blythe has a fear of losing people in her life. And, like, even if we go back to why she might not keep track with some of her friends, it's because they sort of cut off ties with her after she's turned 13 and thus had to be kicked out of the kids next door because she wasn't a kid anymore. But even without that, it still makes sense that Blythe falls back on this. That Blythe is insecure about this. And it's just so good. Well, not good exactly. It's not it's not a positive thing for Blythe. It's so well written. And oh dear. There's just like I I d I wanna get it like there's just too much goodness and I kind of have to get through this. So, oh God, where was I? Okay. Uh, Blythe, because this sets her back from the promise she made to herself, says that she could sell the idea on the packaging alone and that she doesn't need to bring buttercream. And Young Me points out that her face is on it. And she needs a pet to demonstrate the taste. Blythe says that Zoe would be better at acting like they're good. And young me just interrupts her there asking her what's up. And Blythe says she doesn't think the pets like her treats. And when pressed, Blythe says, I just know. And this upsets young me and she doesn't think Blythe believes in her. And she walks out in anger. Blythe, mad at herself, takes it out on the treat, asking why can't you just taste good, and then thinks that they can taste good. So, in her apartment, Blythe is making Young Me style treats, but Buttercream is there guiding Blythe on what her favorite ingredients are to make the treats. Buttercream asks why Young Me can't do that, and Blythe says that young me can't understand you. To which Buttercream responds, that doesn't stop you. And then Blythe explains it in a kind of wordy way. And Buttercream says she still doesn't understand. But oh, that's just a good bit. So now the treats come out of the oven. And Blythe asks Buttercream to try one. And Buttercream says they smell delicious. But she's a bit nervous. But she tastes it and says that they're delicious. Blythe says that all she has to do is convince young me to bring them with her, which Blythe finds impossible at the moment, and Buttercream asks why, and Blythe explains that young me is mad at her. Buttercream comes up with the idea to sneak it in to the treats that young me prepared, because uh, Buttercream's nose can smell which ones they are, and then can eat those. Blythe likes that idea and takes buttercream home. So Blythe comes down through the dumbwaiter the next morning and says she has to rush off to Sweet Delights. 
and she'll explain when she gets back. But Pepper asks, who wants to wait until she gets back? And they're all in agreement that they don't want to, so they sneak through the adjacent hole to get to Sweet Delights to watch the events unfold. Blythe sneaks up to the display, and then Buttercream approaches her, which shocks Blythe. But then Blythe explains what she's doing there and begins her plan. Young Me barges in on Blythe and asks her what she's doing there. Blythe says that she was tidying up her display, but Young Me saw that she was messing with it, and Blythe says she made these treats, and she knows Buttercream likes them, and she's putting them in, and Young Me is very upset with Blythe because she's been acting so weird about this. She takes her display and Buttercream and says, I don't think we can be friends anymore to Blythe, which makes both of them really, really sad, and they tear up. And Young Me leaves, and Buttercream is gesturing to Blythe, and Blythe throws Blythe's treats to Buttercream. Blythe beats herself up this time and asks herself, why couldn't I just tell her the truth? And Russell says that she still can, and this gives Blythe the determination to go to the studio. That's also an intrepid part of Blythe's character, is that, like, She's willing to do stuff for her friends and at the behest of her friends. And her friends are what give her her confidence. And that that's that's the whole thing about Blythe. We've been over this multiple times. This is just another good example of it. So, <clears throat> uh, Young Me is giving Buttercream a pep talk at the studio when she notices Blythe's treats behind her. Young Me is wondering why Blythe is trying to sabotage her as she takes the treats and puts them in her pocket. Blythe arrives at the studio and meets with Aunt Christy. Christy says hi and that Young Me will be excited that Blythe is here. Blythe says she hopes so. Young Me gets on stage. So before before we go any further i just want to point out something so the bear cave it's a shark tank parody it's basically the same idea but they didn't want to use shark tank so they just used bear cave and honestly that's uh it's a pretty good uh bit however this takes the bit and goes a bit further with it so the set is dressed up like a literal bear cave and the judges are all wearing bear costumes. It's it's a bit weird, but I dig it. It's it, it's like the exact amount of goofy the show needs to be and considering that a lot of this episode has been serious to its own points. It, it's kind of the light relief that we need. And, like, they sprinkle all of those bits of light relief throughout the episode. <laughs> and this is just another one of those things that, like, yeah, no, I can believe that. <laughs> anyway, Young Me begins her presentation, and it's a lot smoother than when she was at school because she was stilted there, but this time... There's no pauses, no stilts, just her going at it. She's super confident in her idea. And the pets like it, her class liked it, her teacher likes it. Like, the only thing that might be troubling her is Blythe not having confidence in her. But, like, she's determined. And during the presentation, the most crucial part, young me hands Buttercream one of her treats and Buttercream bites into it and doesn't like it. The bears are shocked. But Young Me salvages it by saying that Buttercream's camera shy. Young Me then thinks to give Buttercream one of Blythe's treats and Buttercream smells it and knows it's Blythe's treat and eats it up. And Young Me thinks to herself she likes Blythe's treats better than mine. But Young Me, being the entrepreneur she is, steers the ship back on course and 
answer presentation. So the bears deliberate and the head bear explains their decision. They like Young Me's energy and presentation and they note that Buttercream loves her treats. They ask if she did this by herself and Young Me says that she got help from a really good friend. And Blythe tears up. And it's so good. The head bear continues by saying that her product is good, but she might not be ready for the pet food industry, which he says can be dog eat dog. They tell her to start small, but think big and come back in a few years and we might just have something for you. So young me takes us in stride and leaves knowing that she did well. Christy, Blythe, and the pets greet young me and congratulate her on her appearance. Christy agrees with the bears and offers to sell her treats at Sweet Delights. Young Me is about to admit that she didn't make them, but Blythe saves her and says that they didn't make enough, and then reassures her that they can make more. Christy agrees and gathers Young Me's stuff. So, while the two of them are alone, Young Me admits that Blythe was right and that no one liked her treats. She notes that Blythe is so good with animals, and she thought she was good at cooking, but she really wasn't. And then, the moment of truth. Blythe tells young me that she has something to tell her. Blythe begins explaining, but she stumbles a bit. But, after going through everything that happened in these past few days, Blythe just comes out and says it, that... She can talk to animals, and animals can talk to her. And Young Me is shocked, and she looks at the pets, and they nod. And she looks at Buttercream, and Buttercream nods. And then Young Me has realizations about what was going on in past episodes. Specifically, uh, Tongue Tied, uh, The Expo Factor, A Commercial Success, Sweet Truck Ride, and Blythe's Big Adventure. I think I may have missed one. I don't think I did. I might have. I just, whatever. So, Blythe says that she didn't want to tell Young Me this because she didn't want Young Me to think she was weird. Young Me says that she's not weird and thinks that it's awesome that she can talk to pets. Blythe thought she wasn't going to tell anyone ever, but she didn't want young me to think that she didn't believe in her because she absolutely does. And she just wanted to save young me from... <sighs> so good. And they hug it out and the pets celebrate. Young me asks what they're saying and Blythe says that they're just happy they're friends again and that you'll just have to trust me on this. Young Me asks the pets if they want more treats and they all run off. And Young Me says that she doesn't need a special power to tell her what that means. And that ends the episode. This, if you cannot tell by now, is one of my favorite episodes in the series. Possibly my favorite up until this point. It's hard to determine. It's just so down to earth with its own premise and its understanding of the show in general. And I really like how it's constructed. It's kind of like the opposite of so interesting, but still really good. Like so interesting embraced the silliness within itself. And it still feels like a good reflection of what the show is. But here they embrace the more down-to-earth, friendship lesson -y kind of thing. And it also works as a good reflection of what the show is, or at least should be. And it's amazing. And, like, like the premise doesn't force-fit itself to the lesson, but rather... It just flows with it. Like, I love how this episode is constructed. Like, at the beginning, 
it presents young me and Blythe being there for each other, helping each other out, while still, in a natural way, presenting the conflict that arises. And it also, like, it also gets into Blythe and young me as characters. And, like, their differences and, like, what makes them friends and how they help and support each other. And, like, Blythe's nervous energy and Young Me's confident energy, like, really make for a good friendship because they, they support each other on this. And... And even though it's tested throughout the episode, they come out the other side as better friends. They're making jokes, like, not even a minute after Blythe gets done telling young me her secret. It's so solid. Oh, good gracious. Like, like we we see all of these things just come together. We see like Blythe wanting to support young me, but like it just kind of fails because Blythe didn't account for young me's young meanness. And so she has to go through these lengths to like rein her in and it's just so good. And like young me is like the same with Blythe where like like, Blythe wants to help Young Me when Young Me doesn't see, like, her own faults. Uh, I just... Like, Young Me also sees Blythe as being great, and she thinks all her friends are great, and she wants to be as great as them. And she thinks she can be. And she knows and supports Blythe. Even after she tells her her secret. And it's just. Uh, it's so good. It's so good. I can't. I can't. Like I also. Really like how it sprinkles its like silly moments in. And what it does it just feels so true to like the undercurrent of the show and what it wants to be and it's just such a good episode it's so good at what it does and i love it i love it okay okay there's just so many little details that like Make the whole thing work. Uh, I'm. I think I'm running out of things to say, but just just know that it's good, and that will do it for this episode of the Littlest Podcast. Be sure to leave your comments and reviews on Shout Engine, on Apple Podcasts, on the Google Play Store. And wherever else RSS feeds go before they head into the bear cave. And be sure to tune in next time for the episode Feud for Thought. I shall see you then.